we have a lot of topics to cover, but I have broadly divided them into two types. The first half is overview and the blue ones are deep dive. So first half means first half an hour, I mean. So this is more for people who consume the analytics or reports created. So there are broadly two categories of people when it comes to data. Those who crunch the data and create analytics and those who use that analytics for decision making. It need not be two different people. It could be the same person creating the report and same person interpreting, but broadly two categories of usage. So the purple part is for the consumer and uh, blue part is for the creator. Now most of you will be both, so not a problem. Now let's go and understand all this in detail. We have been talking about efficiency and uh, you know what efficiency is, but very quickly in terms of usage of all these tools, what are we really trying to achieve? Well, so far I have been telling you two types of uh, inefficiency and versus efficiency. I don't have to tell you you are a manufacturing company and you are expert in that. But in the context of office tools, yes, we have input and output, but this input is not raw material and this output is not ready-made products like cars, for example. This input is you, your time, your precious life. So we don't want to waste that. We want to minimize our input and maximize the outcome. Outcome could be quality-wise, quantity-wise, both, doesn't matter. But minimum effort, maximum impact, that is called efficiency. So if you are putting a lot of effort and not getting commensurate output, that is inefficiency. But even that is operational inefficiency. When it comes to data, apart from operational inefficiency, we also have analytical inefficiency. And as we go along, you will understand what I mean by both. In the first part, we will talk about the analytical thing. In the second part, we'll talk about the operational thing. All right, now, whatever I'm going to show you is going to improve things, but Office is a fuzzy product. It is unstructured. It's difficult to quantify the benefits of what we do. And I'm going to help you understand how to quantify the benefits so you can judge because it's not just someone accepting that there was improvement. You need to see tangible amount of improvement so that you can monitor it like a KPI and see incremental long-term enhancements happening. So how do we go about doing it? So first thing you need to understand on your own, whatever you are doing, is it efficient or not? And I have shown you these three principles last time, but I'm just going to recap by showing how do you find what you're doing is efficient or not? There are very simple three principles. What are the three principles? These principles you think about while you are working. So self audit kind of thing. If you are doing something repetitively, but it's not adding real value, then it must be inefficient. If you think you are helping the software, whether it is Power BI, Word, Excel, that means there must be a better way. And if you are noticing that you are using hands a lot and brain is idle, that means it is inefficient. And this is much more true when it comes to Excel. And I have given you an example last time, but I'll give you a different example this time. And we will then use that example to quantify the efficiency improvement. That's very important because just saying that I have improved is different and then it becoming tangible and repeatable is equally important. So here is the deal. This is Excel. We have data, we have some formulas, we have a chart and a pivot table. When I add data, adding data is my job. But my job is not over. When I finish adding data, I have to go manually and change all the formulas, all the ranges or all the dependents as we call them. That is a waste of life. It is absolutely not your job. So how do you make the software do it? By finding the right solution. You have a need. The need is I will inform Excel about what happened in April. Rest of it Excel should do. The solution is table. When you say insert table, what happens? It will automatically understand to manage the show. You don't have to do anything after this. So select insert table, control T is the shortcut. And then onwards, you do your job 
and Excel will do Excel job. Notice this change, this change, the bottom part and the right part becomes active, so to say, and it will keep on going. So this is good. This is efficiency. Now this did not change because pivot table requires a refresh, but it understands. Now let's say this is happening. Why did this happen? Because I used a feature called table. Now table is there since 2007, but we have not made it a standard operating procedure across the organization that when you have raw data, you must make it a table so that this benefit you get. In fact, this is not the only benefit you get. Very often we have data like this and when we scroll, we can't see the headers and then you do freeze pane. I know the spelling is wrong, but I have intentionally made it wrong. Now you make it a table, look at what happens. Now I don't have to freeze pane. I have not frozen the pane. A, B, C, D. Right now I can see. Now when I scroll, I scroll one more row, that amount discount is going to disappear. Notice my cursor is inside the table. Now if I scroll further, what is going to happen? Look at A, B, C, D. This will automatically change. This is happening because it's a table. And another very important thing, now I have many columns. First column is amount, second column is discount, third is GST, something like that. Now I want to type net amount. Imagine the amount of effort I have to do left arrow, left arrow 70 times. Now you don't have to do that. Press square bracket. Make sure it is this row. So at the rate amount, don't type tab close the square bracket minus again square bracket this row which is another tab and let's say discount so d tab square bracket complete done and now i can be on any row and this will work so i'm just saying divide by two it will change everywhere so there are many benefits of using tables and why am i showing you tables because if you don't use tables in excel power bi will not work Power BI does not understand sheets. Power BI understands tables. And tables are important for better efficiency inside Excel as well as correct use in Power BI. So, although you don't know as of now what is Power BI, if you don't have tables in Excel, you can't use Power BI properly. Because Power BI or Excel, both of them need data. And very often our data is already in Excel, which you should import in Power BI. So tables is the most important thing. But even if you know this, what is the idea? The idea is, okay, we did this, we are going to save time. How do you quantify that benefit? That's very important. So that is what I'm going to show you. As a senior person, you probably are not doing this operational work, but if you empower and create SOPs for everyone down the line, you can confidently calculate the amount of time saved and the time which is saved in operational inefficiency can now be invested in better analytics. So everyone is contributing to better, faster, more agile decision making. So let's say I am going to ask you a question. You can type the answer in Q&A panel or chat wherever you like, preferably chat because this is not a question. I just showed you tables very little. If you start using tables, how much time do you think you will save every day? I know it's not a big number, just tell me few minutes. How many minutes you think you will save every day if you do this? And using that number, I will do the next exercise. So 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we are just talking about one feature by the way. Imagine people are willingly typing the number. Notice your bosses are checking this, <laughs> but don't worry. I am going to take a very conservative number of 7 minutes just based on effective use of let's say one feature called tables. Now how many people benefited let's see 582 is the current tally in our session right now. And how many working days in a year let's remove all the leaves and weekends and all that again a very conservative 170 days. Do you see how much time is saved it's a simple calculation. This is how you quantify efficiency. For every standard operating procedure you create, first step is to create the SOP. SOP is what, you know what is an SOP, but in the context of data or office or unstructured work, then that SOP has to be disseminated to everyone. In manufacturing, you are already used to it. For office, 
you are not used to it. So senior people should send the SOP to all their direct or indirect reports and say tomorrow onwards, unless you have a better way, start using tables. End of story. And then that time which is going to be saved, don't worry, if you save enormous amount of time, you are not going to lose your job. You can intelligently use that time to drive growth by doing better analytics. So save time in inefficiency, non-value-adding activity and invest it in value-adding activities which is proper better analytics. That's the concept. Transactions here, simple data. This is not manufacturing data but this is something anyone can understand. Let's say this is some kind of expense data. So city, date, month, year, card, expense, whatever, whatever. I want to analyze it. Now what would you do in Excel? You would create pivot tables, multiple pivot tables, multiple charts, copy paste them in PowerPoint, send it to boss or present it during a meeting. All that is already happening. Now if I take the same data and create it in Power BI, let's see what happens. It's exactly the same data. So how to import and all that we'll see later. Let's see the net result. Oh, by the way, by the way, before I go there, before I go there, and this is another question, just type yes or no. I am sure you have data which contains some locational information. It need not be latitude, longitude or GPS coordinates, but location, district, city, state, something like that. Question for you, all of you, is once you have data which contains some kind of locational information like this, do you know how to create a map out of it? without manual work, how to create a map from data which contains locational information. Yes, no, type it in chat. It's okay to say no, no problem. So I just want to see the volume of people who know this and don't otherwise if majority is no then we will, I'll show it to you. Question is do you know how to create a map from location. Okay, lots of no's, few yes, which is good. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> lots of responses, bottom line no, so don't worry. So here is the deal, when you think you need something, just assume the solution is there. When the solution or problem is localized, you find the solution in right click. If the problem is bigger, bigger means I want to handle the whole data, then the solution is somewhere on the top. In fact, it is so simple, you will curse yourself for not noticing it for, I don't know, seven years. Go to insert menu, nothing new here. You go here every day. Don't go to this map, go to this one, 3D map. And that's it, one click and Excel is capable of creating a 3D map. You don't have to know lat longs. It creates a map. It automatically plots it. Now our column name happened to be city, but it need not be city, it will check. In fact, it has actually checked all the data inside cities and says 94% of cities I can map with confidence. There are a couple of them which are wrong or it could not understand because this is a hyphen there. Actually, there are two different locations. So you repair that and you are done. Now what does it understand? Right now we had cities, but it understands all of these things which is really powerful. So if you have some locational data of uh, logistics, no problem, you can plot that also. Having said that, we want to see the labels. So you say map labels and then just add your amount or whatever the column is. This is a 3D map and any map has a zoom in, zoom out, that's fine. This one also has a tilt and rotate. You can press Alt key and do a free rotate, zoom in to the lowest possible location, absolutely no problem. You can even search for a location and it will go there. This is by default this kind of map. If you want, you can change it to a satellite map as well. So very, very flexible thing. Bottom line, you did not know it, now you know it. What is the point in knowing it? You will wait for someone to ask you for a report, don't wait. You create the report proactively and next time, even if nobody is asking, show it, everyone is going to benefit because looking at the same data in a geographical manner will give you additional information which everyone is intelligent enough to utilize to your advantage. So every feature is an opportunity for improvement. 
look at it that way. Now having done that, now let's take the same data in Power BI and see what we can do with that. In Excel, I could have created this 3D map, yes, independently, or multiple pivots and charts. Now the same data in Power BI. So this is Power BI is here. You see the transactions field, similar thing. And this is what we could create based on that. Now you will say, okay, this pie chart, I could have done in Excel, 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 Excel. We also saw how to create a map in Excel. In fact, that was a 3D map. This is a 2D map. Never mind. But that is not just that. Suppose if you leave aside the map, these definitely you could have done in Excel. But what is the benefit here is without programming, you can just click on it and it will start working. If I click on fuel, for example, this becomes the filter. I have not done any programming. So it becomes interactive automatically. So if I say what happened in 2017, now this is the filter, everything else got filtered. Or I want to see what happened in Uttarakhand. I do this, uh, what happened in Maharashtra. Control click is multiple locations or control click is multiple filters like this. So now fuel is the filter. Now I'm saying fuel and silver card. Now it's a combined filter. So simple but important. Interactivity means what? You don't click anywhere just because it is worth clicking. No. Now you have to think very often what happens and I'm sure you have noticed it whether you are a creator or a consumer. We know what reports are expected. Yes. We copy them in PowerPoint. Yes. Or whatever method you use and then we present them. And when we present very often what happens after all that no new question is bound to come because only when people see something their thoughts will be stimulated and when a new question comes new question in the context of data the persons are not ready with that answer because that's a new question do we have the data to answer the question yes do we know how to answer the question yes but can you answer it there and then very often not so what is the answer you give i will get back to you i am sure I am sure you have heard this or said this or both before. So that is called inefficiency. That is analytical inefficiency. It is not incompetence. You know how to do it. You have the tools to do it, but you can't do it then and then. So now, because this is interactive, lot of questions say, give me this cut, that cut, break this down by that, something like that can be done interactively during the session. That means, when you say, I'll get back to you, that latent period from you saying it and you delivering the report is a waste of decision making time that reduces business agility. Now we are doing it instantly. But wait, that is also not enough. There is more to it. So all this has AI or artificial intelligence inside it without you having to do anything special. So let me show you something. I'm going to go to a blank page and let's say i got some weird question what are the what are the points in data we have let me show you the fields here so that we can see all the columns so i have something called city and i have something called uh, amount so i want to see the city is where maximum expenses are happening now how will i do it in excel I'll create a pivot table. I will sort it in descending order of day or the amount and then say top three. Yes, that is possible, but I will have to do that. Right now, I want to do it in the meeting in front of everyone. What do I do? So I just double click on an empty page. There is nothing on this page. So you see there are many charts types available. One of the chart type itself, one of the chart type is called Q&A. Now you'll see some of them are familiar with what we do in Excel. Some of them are not. So Q&A is a special type of visual. So basically what is it asking you? What do you want from your data? Okay. So now, never mind those suggestions. It has actually looked at your data and it's saying some sample questions. It is telling you offer it, but we don't have that in mind. I have a specific question in mind. I want top three cities for amount. Now what do I do? It is saying ask a question. How do I ask a question by the way? So if you are on Windows and uh, you have this feature enabled and let me try my luck. Windows H is now dictation.
टॉप थ्री सिटी बाय अमाउंट नोटिस आई स्पोक एंड देन इट हैज गिवन मी समथिंग एंड आई वॉन्ट इट एज अ बार चार्ट सो आई एम जस्ट टाइपिंग एज बार चार्ट वॉट एपन इट्स एक्चुअली गिविंग मी द रिजल्ट दिस इज ए आई इन एक्शन नाउ रिमेंबर वेन आई एम शोइंग यू समथिंग डू हैव या दिस इज नेचुरल लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग डू गिव मी सम रिएक्शन एज वेल आई आई एम श्योर यू नो वॉट आर रिएक्शन you like it don't like it go slow go fast happy face sad face so do that as well so i get an impression of what you are feeling you need not type it in chat there is a separate thing called reactions i hope that is enabled or you can put it in chat also no problem so this is how it is interactive now suppose i say top 3 city by amount but in sales we don't call it amount we call it revenue but i don't have a column called revenue then what will happen so let's see i am saying top 3 city by revenue now what happens it says sorry i don't understand what is revenue uh, we are stuck no we are not stuck that double underline red says do you want to tell me what is revenue so next time onwards i can use it oh so we can actually put our business vocabulary there so what is it saying revenue refers to what oh it call amount all right done so now it will say okay i have understood it and now onwards whenever you type revenue it will understand so now notice the same revenue is now not red underline it is proper and i am saying it show it as a bar chart so this is the idea now what does it understand lots of things we will see that in the second half but before we go further this has a very very powerful feature which actually is really powerful very often when you see a chart like this what is the obvious question you are going to write what happened in july isn't that the obvious question anybody will ask that question whether you are junior senior doesn't matter now if you have anticipated the question and answered it well fine very good but if you are not then you still have the same columns by the way this visual is using two of them one is the date and one is the amount that's all we are doing but there are many other columns now when i say why did this go down it may be because a particular class of cities the business was low or a particular gender did not buy it or something so when you say explain how are you going to explain yes i you will say i'll get back to you give your report you will submit the report but that report explaining the decrease will be in the context of what city class state card type expense type so many parameters you have that is the problem that is called yes fulfilling the report explaining what happened but not fully so let's understand what analytics is and this is very critical because this will change your way of working so what is analytics we are looking at some data and trying to learn something useful very good we know that where did the data come from the fact that you have data means it has happened already it's historical so that's why you captured it so we are trying to learn something useful and relevant from the past okay and then what to do with it you cannot change the past but we will use that knowledge to try and improve the future make it more favorable to ourselves that is the whole purpose okay so now question is how many useful things would you like to know and the question another question same question can be rephrased as how many reports are you making for that data that is the question how many useful things do you want to learn so generally that will be a finite answer so depending on the data and the business context you may have 5 10 14 whatever number of reports how many reports who decides situation decides boss decides government decides regulator decides somehow over period of time those number of reports have evolved those are good they are being done so whatever that number is that number is a limitation it's few ideally we should try to learn how many things when i just remove those numbers and if i just keep the word few 
I'll read the sentence. Learn few useful things from the past. Does that sound efficient? No. Obviously, we want to learn all possible useful things from the past. That is called efficiency. So, this is analytical efficiency. Now, question is, how do you do it? You have the data, yes. But how many reports will I keep creating? Do I have unlimited time? No. So, this is a feature in Excel and I'm going to show you in Excel as well as Power BI simultaneously. So now, yes, I finished making all the required reports. The important thing is not to stop, not to stop. Now this requires the Office 365 version of Excel. If you have the correct version, you will see either the button called Ideas or a button called Analyze Data. It's just one button. What is it saying? Let me show you the tooltip, read it. It is not asking you which reports you want. That is pivot table and all that. Here it is saying, I will look at the data. I will correlate every column with every other column. I will find what sounds interesting or significant. I will show it to you. Then you decide. So one click is all that is required. And then it uses AI to analyze your data and creates reports. So it's saying something has gone wrong here and this is how the pattern is. Now, if you're interested in that, if you're interested in that, go ahead and look at it. If you're not, for example, amount by expense type and gender, maybe it's a report you already know. Okay, go ahead. So look at, it did not ask you how many reports. It is showing you some reports. So now look at this and look at this. This is a frequency distribution of age of customers, for example. So now what does this clearly indicate that older age group is not doing whatever is this data about either they are not purchasing or spending or whatever that is. Now if this is something you know, okay, ignore it. If you realize that, oh, your products are not being bought by older people, there must be something you can do. That something could be from R&D point of view, sales point of view, marketing point of view, that's a separate issue. But you are learning all potentially useful things and how much effort, one click and scroll. That is the idea. Now this is data, you know, the. now I'll just go to another piece of data, which is similar, similar columns, I mean, just the locations are different, but it's text. Now I'm going to click the same button on different data with exactly the same columns. Now see what happens. It is still doing the same thing. It is still making reports, but the reports are different and the number of reports are also different. Like that, if I use another one, this is similar data again, I click on the same analyze data button. Notice how many reports it created, 36. It is important to scroll to the bottom and and look at all of them. And how often do you look at them? Every time the data changes, because every time the data changes, the correlation changes. So this becomes a standard operating procedure. Now, this is not going to reduce the amount of time you spend on creating reports. That's operational efficiency. This is analytical efficiency and this will empower everyone because we have been working on the same data for decades and we know what to expect. But this may give you unexpected but empowering things. This is competitive advantage. And who can contribute? Not only senior people, every person has to click on this. So what is the SOP now? After you have finished making all the reports, click on the data, analyze data button, eyeball them. And now if you find something interesting, for example, let's take one. Suppose this particular thing has now I want to investigate. I click this, it adds a pivot table, it puts a chart, it's already formatted, then you can do further investigation. So it's actionable information. How to get this tool? Please don't put questions in chat. Chat is for interaction when I ask you, you a question. Put questions in Q&A, otherwise it becomes confusing for Rishabh and team to keep track of which questions are answered and which are not answered. Now, just to complete this AI story, let's look at another situation. Now, this feature is available only in Power BI. Line chart you can draw in Excel also. But this is June 54,000, July 18,000. Why? 
Now I said I will get back to you. I gave you a report by this or this. That is not understanding it fully. We want to learn all possible useful things. So right click, analyze. Look at this. It's a brilliant option there. Because therefore, I don't know, six years. Many people who are using Power BI also don't use it. But never mind. Now you know. So explain the decrease. AI will look at all your other parameters and rank them in the order of influence. And the topmost seems to be state. So it's saying actually everything has gone down, but the maximum contribution of that decrease is from these three states. So it's a waterfall chart. This is the value of June, this is the value of July, and this is the breakdown. Now there are lots of states. There is not enough space to show you. So the smaller contributing states have been grouped together as other. And it is also showing you the first amount of change which happened in the context of that particular state. So because this was highest, it is ranked like this. But this is just one parameter. This is one way of looking at that decrease. Scroll down. The next influencer is gender. So business done in the context of females has gone down. Or this is class cities. B2 and B1 cities business went down and so on and so on. So now you understand what I'm saying. Learn all possible useful things is already implemented in Excel as well as in Power BI. But that button being there is not useful. It has to become a standard operating procedure so that everyone willingly and happily does it and contributes to their own growth as well as organizational growth. So that is how AI helps us. Now, one last demo of AI and then we will take questions and then move from the analytical to operational part. So one more thing. Suppose I have this revenue and I want to, oh, by the way, simple thing like tooltip can be done better. So now generally, whenever I have something, what does the tooltip show me? Whatever is on x-axis, whatever is on y-axis. So this is, uh, let's zoom in. So this is what travel amount. Okay, that's obvious, right? But what if you want a more enriched tooltip? That is beautifully possible now. For example, look at this. This is the same bar chart. Now, if I go and hover on any of the bar, what do you expect it will show me? What will it show me? The same thing, the month and the amount. I have not enabled the uh, data labels. So let me enable those. If you see the data labels, tooltip is not going to show you anything new. You already know it is October 17K, November 18K. So tooltip is also going to tell you the same. No, you can customize tooltips in a brilliant manner like this. This is the tooltip for May. Now when I move from May to June, notice what happened. Look at what is happening here. Look at the breakdown of B2A. Notice the breakdown changed. Do you see the difference? This is live interactive tooltip. So the current month where you are hovering is actually the filter condition. Isn't that better? Less effort and more impact. You don't have to say I'll get back to you and so on and so forth. And one last thing about this. When you have data, very often we want to explore it proactively. Don't want a report. While discussing, we want to explore proactively. So let's do that. So we have a very nice feature here. I'm just going to delete this. We want to look at our revenue and how the whatever that X amount, we want to break it down by all these parameters. So that is a very powerful tool called decomposition tree. Never mind the technical name, but understand the significance. So what am I trying to analyze? Amount, whatever that is. And I want to break it down or analyze it in a free form manner using what? Let's say class of city, state. I'm just adding all the parameters. Just drag and drop one below another. The order in which you drag drop does not matter. Okay, month as well. So all these I want to analyze. Now what is it telling me? There is amount. Now it's asking me, Sure. What do you want to break down amount by? So whatever we have typed here, say, okay, I want to break it down by class of city. So it gives you this. Now I want to see, okay, B1 cities, I want to break it down further by what? Okay, card type. Now 
silver card i want to break it down further by let's say gender oh, females seem to be using silver card more in b1 cities all right and then i want expense type oh maximum is food like that you can actually go and look at it now what is this chain look at this amount is being broken down by b1 class silver card type female expense type food and then final breakdown on city so what did we do we broke it down now i want to do the same analysis for b2 i just click here and everything will change isn't that much better way of understanding our data this is like data brainstorming if you want to call it that way everyone doesn't understand all the cuts you say give this cut by that it's interactive but even this is inefficient why because i decided to break it down by class first then i decided so this is based on my gut feel my experience my cognitive bias whatever you want to call it we are used to understanding it that way so you broke it down like that nothing wrong with that but let's restart i'm going to delete all of them and i want to ask ai i want to break it down by amount assuming amount is revenue what maximizes revenue you tell me that so if i want highest value of amount what is the parameter amongst these which is the most important so i say show me the parameter which gives me highest value so notice it says okay this is class now this one is high within that what is higher contributor i am not choosing the next parameter now it says oh card type and then this one that is gender and this one this is expense type and this one like that i am going on now this is b2 but these are decided by ai now if i go to b1 just remember this breakdown right now after class card type gender expense type month c g e m now i am going to b1 notice what happened this was changed or if i go to something else gender came last and state came first so this is how you can not only break it down but you can understand the influence it may get take some time for you to understand what is happening but this is a very good way of understanding your own data better and the last thing about ai is this same dashboard i show five people and ask them what have you understood you'll get five different answers fine everyone thinks differently but i want to put some answers which are obvious which may not be obvious to everyone there that's why in powerpoint you put annotation saying this is the highest value this is 10% of that that annotation can now come automatically so we have a one click it's called smart narrative i have a kept space here so when i click on smart narrative it is going to analyze what is there in the dashboard and it is actually going to interpret it for you i did not write a single word here this is how the same old data can give us much much better results so now this is overall picture now let's say i filter on fuel obviously the data is going to get filtered so the description will also get readjusted so this is how power bi and excel both if used correctly can dramatically reduce wastage of time and help you invest that time into value adding intelligent activities which will drive everyone's growth please learn this please make sops of this and please teach it to as many people as you can so now i'm going to take a question break and see what questions we should address now and this ends the overview kind of section and the next section will be deep dive and understand from scratch what is power bi how to use it what is common between excel power bi and so on but right now so like in excel we have something called chart templates i hope you know that probably not so i am just going to show you that and then also answer the power bi one so what happens in excel is very often we spend time not just in creating reports but customizing the look and feel so a lot of time goes in axes and colors and gaps so assume you have customized all that right now i'm just making them stick to each other and i'll use some random 
Now, assume I want charts like this in Excel. You say right click, save as template, save as template, and then give this a name. Now, tomorrow I want the same chart. What do I do? I go to the data, I go to insert, I do not click on this, I click on this. These kind of things are called dialog launchers. They give you the full dialog. Here also you don't click anywhere here. Go to all charts, you will see templates and you will see the template which I just saved and now it will come like this. These templates should be shared with your team so nobody wastes time doing this again. Let's understand whether it is Power BI or Excel or Tableau. We have three steps to do. So the three steps are what is first step you have to have data and your objective is to analyze it. Very good. So you spend some time here, spend some time here, but majority of the time gets spent on this. So this is operational boredom hands used brain not used here brain is used. So we have to minimize or eliminate this. If the data comes in a bad format, you can't eliminate it. So you have to minimize the time and this is a very important concept. And whatever I'm going to show you next is common in Excel as well as Power BI. So whether I use Excel to show the demo or Power BI, exactly the same thing is available in both. So what is available? Earlier, we had three ways of cleaning up data. Either do it manually or put some formulas to clean it up or use some existing feature like text to columns or write macros or a combination of these. Now all of them are outdated and inefficient. If you are doing any of these, stop doing them and look at get and transform. Get and transform is your best friend for data import, cleanup, merging, combining, data transformations and all kinds of things you can't even imagine you need but you didn't know how to do in spite of knowing macros. So first step of improving data analytics is to absolutely minimize and eliminate time spent in import and cleanup and that is done from here. If you don't see get and transform, talk to IT. If you have an older version of Excel and you don't have get and transform, you can install Power Query add-in. So you go there, you see this, don't have it, uh, IT will do the needful for you. Power Query is a separate tab but the same options anyway. Now what is the idea? Let's actually take an example of how to import and clean up data and then you will understand better. Now, problem is the if you say I want to clean data, what exactly is clean data? That definition itself is not clear. So if I give the same data which needs to be cleaned to all of you and all of you clean it, the output will not match because everyone's perception of what clean data is there is no definition. So let's define that first. So this is a checklist of good data. Good means clean. You look at the input data, whatever you have got from CSV dump, manually type, whatever it might be. And then for each column, you think, does it have a heading? Okay. Does it have no blanks? Okay. No duplicate headings. All these have to be true. If they are not true, that means the data is bad or unclean. So suppose you decide that it's my subtotals hai, or it's my data type. Ka gad bad hai. So others are okay. These two are not okay. So you have to clean up for this. You have to clean up for this. So by applying this checklist to every input data, you will know where you stand correct currently and then what exactly needs to be done to clean up the data. What is clean data is not personal preference. It's an absolute truth. Either the data is clean or not clean. There is nothing in between. So some, some of them may not be obvious. I will give you a few examples so that you understand. Some of them, for example, are not commonly understood and in the process we will also see how to clean. So first step is to understand what to clean and then how to clean. So what to clean, let's see. So some of them are really simple. Merge cells are absolute no, no. Merge cells are okay for output. Input should not have merge cells. End of story. Because input ko dekhta kon hai, koi nahi dekhta. Input you have to use to create an output which is worth looking at. So input should not have merge cells. Now another one. One type. It is easy to say one type. But notice here we have 
type of insurance for example autos and this health insurance catastrophic like that business insurance or shop is different factory so type and subtype two different meanings in one column is a disaster it should be like this that is simple to understand but it need not be two meanings like this it could be two meanings in the column and that's a dangerous one like this this is a very common thing we get gaps so now you need to fill the gaps we will see how to do that but this is an example of apparently the data is consistent but it is not this is okay this means zero or i don't know this doesn't mean zero this doesn't mean i don't know this cell means jan this cell means fy20 this cell means feb that is where the ambiguity is so how to fill it up we will see this is another one the other one is no formatting this is very common raw data mein formatting dalne ka nahi why because that formatting has a meaning yes you know the meaning but if you send it to others they will not know the meaning and you are also going to forget after 6 months because in those 6 months you have used the same yellow color in 20 places so it's really bad meaning needs a column because you cannot get total of yellow or total of red yes technically by writing a macro but there are so many different types of formatting 140 different formatting attributes really you are going to write 140 types of macros no so meaning means column like this now you can put conditional formatting if you want if you still like to visually see it but that's what i mean data and formatting are not replaceable data is data formatting is formatting they are not a substitute to each other and then one of the biggest problems we get data like this very often and that is a really bad idea like this this is called a cross tab so every table should have a column every column should have a header so let's say i have this oh there is no header so i say product now the data is clean no it is absolutely not clean yet why because what is the problem here look at my rules what were our rules of data you remember what were the data rules i just showed you each column has a heading yes no blank heading yes no duplicate heading yes where is the problem everything seems okay no i said heading this is not heading this is data so ideally i need three columns product month year whatever and then amount so this is also unclean data so now that you know what is unclean next step is to clean how do you clean well there are thousands of scenarios for data cleanup so shesham will put a list of a uh, set of articles i have written which are about data cleanup so shesham data analytics knowledge pack blog article just put the link it's not one article it's some 50 articles which talk about different aspects of data cleanup but i will show you some examples to understand this powerful tool called get and transform so let's start with this i want what product a month and amount now you will say okay i will do this no you can't do that because this product will have four rows so okay product month and amount let's say now i'll have to copy this and then copy paste transpose copy paste transpose even the thought is inefficient so don't do it not your job don't write a macro no manual no formulas no macro and still more efficient that is called power query so remember this is a separate sheet assume this data was large now i'm going to clean it how do i do it now before we go any further here is the deal if the data is already in excel and you are cleaning it up the cleaned version of data is also going to come to excel then that piece of data is going to occupy space twice don't do that so i'm just going to save this file for a demo purpose and i will show the correct way of importing and cleaning up data from anywhere to anywhere and the same concept applies to power bi also because power bi doesn't have an excel sheet anyway so i'm going to close this file first of all but wait what is our another rule data which is in tabular format should be in what format it should at least be a table so create a table first insert table 
don't do anything else you can't create a table unless all those 10 rules are satisfied now all the rules are satisfied except one header contains data so this is a table when you create a table by default some random names will come but give it a better name let's call it data or better still my data whatever you want now i'm going to close the file save the file close the file now what happens i want to import the data in clean format only so i go to file there is nothing in this file empty i go to data from excel another excel no problem now i go to excel pick up this now this is very important when it shows it will show you everything which is there in that excel file it does show you sheets but sheets are a really bad idea why is that a bad idea because invariably in your sheet there will be some title there may be some random data here and maybe you wrote something here and then later on you deleted it now if i try to import this see what happens doing exactly the same thing and now if i say sheet you will get this junk and if you use table you will get this that is why tables are absolutely your best friend so now i have the data and now i can decide what what i want to do with it if it is clean then i say load if it's not clean i want to clean it so the sober word for clean is transform so i say transform now it opens the real deal this is the tool this is your absolute best friend for a data cleanup table is a data container this is for a data cleanup okay so what is it showing now it's showing me the same data right now nothing great this is not excel this dialog is called power query this is exactly same in excel and power bi so this is a tool where you look at the data decide what you want to repair and try to repair it so how do we go about doing it if you really look at this data doesn't it look like someone has created a pivot table and copy pasted it where we have put product in rows month in columns and whatever amount in data area so it is like a pivot table so i want to undo that pivot table in reality there is no pivot table the format output is like pivot table so this is a good column i don't want to touch it these are the bad column bad columns i want to select them and transpose them once and for all so what do you do two methods either select the bad columns and transpose them possible but generally we have few good columns and many bad columns so selecting the bad columns itself is extra work we don't want to do that so select the good column and then baki logon ko sudharo now we don't know what to do when you don't know what to do you right click and read all the options and think which option will help us take your time so which option will help us type in chat not in q and a quick so go from top to bottom and think will this help will this help will this help yes unpivot but unpivot has three options very nice unpivot other columns and in one click it gets transposed and this is a sample data but even if it was 2 million exactly the same thing and now that we have the data we can clean it and but before you do that always look at this this is very good at understanding data types so if it understands the data type it automatically assigns abc means text text number in case it did not you can click here and change the data type very very quickly so this is how power query works now because this is yeah this is like a bulk transpose now we want the data back now for demo purpose it can be into imported in a sheet but if this was large data what do you want to do you do not want to import it in excel not because maybe it's gone more than 1 million rows but even if 200000 rows excel is going to become slow if you import it in the sheet so while importing using get and transform in excel you have a choice 
do you want to import it in a table table means excel sheet or do you want to import it in data model data model is very large capacity there is no upper limit not 1 million even 10 million is okay there is technically no upper limit the real limit is your local hardware performance and of course if i do this right now it is going to get imported in table as well as data model that is a waste of space so here you say create only connection and data model that is how you import data into data model now if i do that what will happen the excel sheet will still be empty you will not be able to see anything there it will tell you that 12 rows are loaded but where are they so where is this thing called data model go to power pivot manage and then it opens another window called power pivot where you can see the data you can still create pivot table based on that but this is going to be very small file size and very high performance so that is the solution to large data now if i want to keep it in excel i can always right click say load to and for demo purpose i am removing it from data model putting it in table no problem it is telling you that now i got the clean data here but this is not done there is more because invariably what is going to happen when your data changes what happens so this is my raw data now remember now i am going and changing the old raw file so i am saving this i am closing it now what happens obviously this thing doesn't understand but don't worry you don't have to repeat the process just say right click and refresh and not only that if you want to do that repeatedly and you don't want to forget that remember this is a table along with this you will see a query dialog or a query tab because this is based on an external data source and there in the query dialog what do you see there are many options one of which is properties and here you can say i may forget but you refresh the data automatically while opening the file and let's say you're going to keep the file open whole day and people are doing data entry or the source is dynamically changing no problem you are even able to refresh it the frequency of one minute done So whatever I am showing right now is available in Excel. So the tool is already available. So Power Query, whatever you learn is equally applicable in Excel and Power BI. And the concept of what we just saw is really powerful because usually what we do when it comes to data cleanup, first of all, it's a repetitive process. Yes, you know that. Not only is it a repetitive process, what is the problem? It is not only repetitive, every time old data is clean new data is coming and unclean then you are repeating it size goes up and so on and so forth now what is happening in power query well power query has to be told what you do once and then you just refresh all the steps will be reapplied so little bit of effort first time next time onward just refresh as long as the source has not changed so this itself will dramatically improve your life because it's going to save enormous amount of time in the process so now let's see another scenario and how to do it we had one tool one uh, other situation what was that the other situation was one type of data what was that one type of data means i showed you that there were gaps now some of you will know select go to special blanks equal to up arrow control enter that was the best way till now but not any longer now power query is the best so this is the data right now i'm showing it to in the same file but never do it in the same file save the file blank file import and clean up but right now for demo purpose data get data then where is it right now it's here so i'm not going to this so from selection it will create a table automatically show you power query same thing but now our objective is different what is our objective we want to fill the gaps we do not want to fill the gaps in amount gaps are shown as null by the way so select both the columns control click when you don't know something right click and now 
what is option not replace values because it's not single value fill down and it's done and now next time the data changes you just refresh so this is really really powerful so like this i can keep on showing you many many different things but one last cleanup thing and then we will go to the dashboarding and visuals part of it so what is the most common one of the most common i would say is data in a folder so you have files like this multiple csvs all of them have the same structure customer date amount country same thing but i don't want to manually copy paste the files which is what we do or we write a macro both of them are inefficient so let me do it here assume this was a new file data get data from file not csv this would be used if it was single csv oh by the way very often we get csvs which are very large and you know it is not going to fit in 1 million then we make pieces of 1 1 million that is not required if this was a 10 million csv and you click on it do you know what power query does it doesn't even attempt to open 1 million or whatever rows it shows you a sample of 1000 rows you do whatever clean up you want and only when you have finalized that then it actually does the import this itself is huge time saving because otherwise you have to first import everything then clean it up which makes everything very slow and extremely inefficient so that is another benefit of power query irrespective of the size of the data it shows you a small sample allows you to clean it and then actually does the import but in this case it is not one csv it's multiple so from folder and i'm going to just copy the path so i'm copying the path from here and pasting it now what happens well the navigator dialog is the same same but because there are multiple files here what is it asking me what do you want to do with these files so i want to say i want to combine and load once it is loaded i am okay with the data i don't want to clean it up so i say combine and load if you also wanted to clean it up you would have said combine and transform so now i am saying combine and load now another question it'll ask you because there are multiple files involved is asking me which file should i take as the sample file assuming the file format is same it doesn't matter first file is good enough and then you go and say load and once you say load what happens it is actually going to perform the operation and do the job for you to say okay and now you sit back doesn't matter 3 or 3000 files it's not your job any longer and it's done now of course when you put a new file there what is going to happen let's say i got a file april also i copy paste in that and this happens very often i don't have to bother i just have to refresh job is done that is what i mean revolutionary data clean up less effort more impact more accuracy more time to do intelligent work than mundane work everyone benefits so this is how power query can help you in cleaning up data effectively there are of course lots of more examples so shesham i am sure they will have questions so on my youtube channel there are many data clean up scenarios there is a playlist and specifically right now i showed you multiple csv files the other variation is multiple excel files the third variation is multiple sheets in an excel file all of those videos are there shesham will put the link in chat so any questions i'll take a pause services as well uh, but when it comes to any user expect a real time feature what can be the minimum refresh time in this case so very good question absolutely real time data can be managed and you require iot hub and if you talk to it i am sure they have already been using it somewhere so if you have an it use case talk to it real time data from plc shop floor whatever devices you have can be ingested on the cloud there you can't use power bi desktop because your desktop is not connected to the stream which is coming from iot device but absolutely power bi is capable of uh connecting to real time data sources and analyzing it 
with a live refreshing dashboard with very little latency. So I'm just going to put a link so that you can see in detail later. I'm going to put that link in chat. Okay, next. Uh, sir, uh, this learner has observed that doing calculations within R or Python, uh, importing data makes Power BI faster. And if the calculations are done within Power BI, it, it responds slowly while adding filters. How to improve performance while doing calculations in Power BI? Yeah, so when you say calculations, there are two places where you can do the calculations. That's number one. Now, some calculations can be done at the time of importing the data and that will happen in Power Query. And some calculations are required for reporting purpose and they are better done after importing the data. So, I need to know which type of calculations you are doing, number one, and what type of calculations you are doing. Maybe you send me a mail with some sample data and then I will be able to answer that question better. So, send the mail to Rishabh. I will also give you my email ID. We will help you. But I need to know specific calculation. Uh, how to automatically convert matrix form of data into a table format referring to the example uh, you gave uh, 10 minutes back? I already showed you unpivot, but sometimes you have multiple headers. How to do multiple headers on pivot? Uh, there is a video for that also. Shesham will put the link. Next. Uh, while, Im uh, while importing existing uh, formats of historical data, we come across horizontally merged cells, especially in headers. How yeah. to do the fill sideways or any other option? Yeah, correct. That is the exact thing I said in different words. Generally, when you have merged cell, that is one level of header. Below that, there is second level of header. So, if you have multiple level headers, you can't do fill horizontally. So, that is the video in that playlist you will show you. So, look for a video which says how to clean up data with multiple headers. Okay, two more questions and then I'll go to the dashboarding part. Uh, so, when we publish the data, is it uh, uh, public or only selected users can access? You decide it's your data so when you publish. By default only you will see it and when you publish it on the dashboard, let's say this is the report which I was showing you earlier on the desktop. I have published it, let's say. Now, I decide whom to share it with. So, you have a share button like we see in OneDrive specific people that kind of thing and you can decide the names of people and also prevent them from sharing it further if you want to so remove this checkbox apply put the names of people that's it uh, last one for now uh, how to use advanced filters in power bi query editor Power BI Query Editor filtering works somewhat like Excel, but you can have really, really powerful filtering done because it's a very comprehensive language. So, advanced filter could mean multiple columns being filtered or a more sophisticated filter condition within the context of the column. Both are possible. If you send me some specific example, I can give you the steps. Great. So, let's stop questions now and then see what to do with the data we get. And one of this, whatever I was showing you was single, single tables. That is okay, but very often we have multiple tables. And then what do you do? That's a question. So, let's handle that part first. So, what happens is we get data like this. Some ID, some ID. Now, in report, I don't want ID. I want product name and country name. So, what do you do? We have a separate master, separate master. Then you create a pivot table. Pivot table can be created only from one table. So, you are stuck. So, now I have to decode it by adding extra VLOOKUPs and struggle in every way possible way of the uh, meaning of the word struggle. This means in the ki jata hai. So, ye nahi karna hai abhi. Abhi kya karna hai? We have three tables. 
import all the three tables in a separate new file in data model. For demo purpose, it's already done. Now, right now it's a demo, so it's in the same file, but in real life, separate. So I have the same data imported in a new file. It looks like Excel sheet, but this is Power Pivot. This does not allow you to change data. You can add calculated columns, but not the original data. Original data, you can only change in the source and then say refresh all. That's it. But what is the point? So the point is, at this stage, if I had gone to the individual table, I could have created a pivot table, but that pivot table will show me only one table. That's not what I want. That's why I have gone to Power Pivot and imported all three tables. But wait, in transactions, the country ID maps to this country ID column. That is what I was indicating in a roundabout manner using VLOOKUP. That was patchwork compromise. But now we have a direct method of doing that by going to diagram view. So go to Power Pivot Data Model, go to diagram view and create relations. The column name need not be same, but what is the requirement? This is a master for country. So the country ID in this table should appear only once. And of course, there will be multiple transactions here. So you can drag the equivalent from here to here. In this case, the top column names are same. They need not be. So on this side, unique country. On this side, multiple. So star. Same thing I have done with product also. This is all you need to do. And in fact, when you see it in pivot table, we are never going to put product ID. So you just say hide. So unwanted things you hide so that your pivot table field list has less items to play with. And now I close this. My job here is done. And now I go to an empty file and I do not create a pivot table from this data. This is data in Excel sheet. I can create pivot table from table, but no, I don't want to do that because I have a better version of the data in the data model. If you have an older version of Excel, the instead of these four options, the pivot table dialog itself will have an option called data models. So now notice what happens. I go here, I get all the tables. Ignore this for now, there is some other table. But now I can put name of country from here. I can put name of product from here. And I can put whatever I want from here. So it's still a pivot table, but best of both worlds. This is how you eliminate VLOOKUP. This is how you'll relate tables from different places and still end up creating a pivot table, pivot chart, something which is familiar to you. Exactly the same thing happens in Power BI. So in Power BI, when you go, there is no Excel sheet at all. So what happens in Power BI then? Well, when you import in Power BI, it doesn't ask you where to import. It directly imports here. This is the data tab, which is equivalent to data model in Excel. Equivalent of get and transform is this. If you already have data and you want to edit the query, this. And now that I have two tables, city and transactions, how do I create a relationship? This is the third tab, which is equivalent to the diagram view in Excel. Same thing, drag drop. Notice here one side is ID, other side is something else. One side is ID, other side is something else. Doesn't matter. Obviously, the keys should match on the city master ID should not repeat. Same story. It looks little better here. Now, while we are at it, <coughs> sorry. Remember, I told you while asking question in Power BI, we said total revenue and there was no column called revenue. So this is another beautiful thing here in data model also, Excel also available. This is amount, but I can actually put synonyms here itself proactively so that whatever natural language things people use will automatically be understood by Excel as well as Power BI. Very, very nice feature. So this is how we manage the data, multiple tables. And while we are at it, those multiple tables, as you can probably visualize, but let me explicitly say that, this transactions table could have come from Oracle connection. Products master could have come from Excel. Countries could have come from CSV. It doesn't matter. So multiple data sources, all kinds of merging, cleaning, all of that is happening. 
now that we have the data, the next step is to create visuals. In case of Excel, the only thing you can do is pivot tables and charts. So that's something you already know. So I'm not going to tell you, but I will tell you an amazing feature because many times we create a pivot table. That's not the final report. You want this to be customized, the final output, but you can't. You can't just drag this cell outside, mm -hmm. right? So you use some weird paste link. Never use paste link, always use get pivot data. But if that pivot table is created based on based on data model, then it gives you an absolutely amazing new feature. So this is the original pivot table. This is a copy of it. You go to pivot table analyze and then say OLAP tool. This button is generally never seen enabled. Now it will be enabled. And now you say convert to formulas. This is revolutionary. Now notice what happens. This no longer a pivot table, but now it is still linked to the data. When you refresh, it is going to change like a pivot table, but now you can do whatever you like to create a report in custom format. So this is even better than get pivot data. Get pivot data is another alternative. If you don't have a pivot table based on data model, but even if you use get pivot data, creating multiple get pivot data statements one by one is a pain. So Shesham will put a link to a macro I have written, how to use get pivot data properly. Paste as pivot is a article. Okay, so next, now let's talk about the visuals part. Now that we have the data, what do we do with it? So let's start from scratch. We have two tables right now, city master transactions, and then this is the place where we create something like this. But let's start with a blank slate. So we have data, we have relationships, and we have a blank canvas to work on. So this is the place where you see all the available visuals. This one, visuals. This is formatting of a selected visual. And this is a list of fields, like a pivot table field list. If there are multiple, this will be closed. It's a good idea to expand all. Like a pivot table, this does allow you search. So if I say C, I, it will filter it quickly. Don't scroll and search. You'll notice that city and state have a globe next to that. So that is something you should do after importing data in the data model. Same thing is available in Excel as well. For example, I have a number called year. The data type is number. But when I drag drop, I never want to sum or average a year. So Go to summarization and say, don't summarize. This is called data modeling. Then for city, for example, this is city, but practically speaking, what is it? It is just text. Now I want to explicitly tell Power BI, this is not just text. This is a special category called city. So, so many different categories are there. Beautiful. Another one, image URL. Suppose you have a master of all your car models or spare parts or whatever. And each one has a URL. That URL should be accessible, ideally on SharePoint in corporate context. Now, if you just put image URL and create a visual, it's just going to show the URLs like text. But you want to interpret that URL and show the image, then you classify that column as image URL. It's really, really powerful. So broadly, two types of categories, geography and URLs. A barcode we will not go into right now. So done. Now we have visuals. So how do you create visuals? Well, first choose the visual from here. Let's say pie chart. We'll create a blank pie chart. This is only if you want R. I don't want R right now. Now, what do I want? Notice when I click on the visual here, it shows me what can go inside the visual. So this is pie chart. So it's showing me legend, details, values, and so on. Now, just for demo purpose, I'm going to take a column chart. Notice what is it showing? Axis, legend, values, small multiples. So this changes. Now we have equivalent of pivot table called matrix. What do we have in a pivot table? Something goes in rows, something goes in columns, something goes in values. Same thing here. Pivot table also has filter. Filter is a separate pane here. That's why filter is not shown. So bottom line, 
when you choose a visual look at where you can put data so these are called field wells qua field wells so you drag and drop whatever you want here so values amount it will show that then what do we want we want uh, to break it down by what that's the legend oh i want to break it by expense type so drag and drop and then resize it that is how you create a visual so let's create a couple of more i'll use this visual this is what column chart stack column chart so axis what do i want let's say i want month and in the values i want amount but i want to break this down by gender for example this is a stacked bar chart like this we create visuals now because these things are geography if you drag drop something which has text what will happen it will just put it as simple text i just drag drop i didn't choose a visual that is also possible then it will use a default visual but if i drag drop something which i have marked as geography then it will automatically plot it now any visual you want to expand this is called focus mode so it becomes full screen temporarily and then you can go back to the report but right now what has it done it has just plotted location now look at what else is available here we have location and then we have lat long so in case you don't have this you have lat long do that but size that is let's say amount so now it will create proper bubble chart kind of thing and tool tip will tell you what to do now in addition to this you wanted something else in the tool tip notice all visuals will have a tool tip area so let's say in this obviously it is going to show me default whatever is there state and amount but i also want average age or something like that so i age i put it as tool tip now age is a number so drop down you say what do you want average actually i didn't have to choose that because when i got the data i have already done that so this is another part age is a number do i never want to summarize it like year no i want to but default should not be sum it should be average so that also i have specified that's why it did so now when i go here it shows me a more enriched tool tip so like that lot of sophistication is available now all this i have just done randomly let me add one more let's add something like a pivot table so i'll add a matrix now very important thing to understand if you have clicked something and then you change the visual this visual will be changed to this visual that's a common mistake so if you are adding a new visual click on a blank area to avoid that mistake so now it is like rows columns so i am going to put something here card type class of city and uh, amount so we have something here now all this is automatically interactive so now if i click on say this one fuel everything else will get filtered notice how intelligent this is in a stack bar chart also it is doing just to simplify it i am going to make it a sada bar chart so you understand first so when i click here everything is going to be filtered by fuel so now if you go to the tool tip of this guy what is it going to show me it is showing me two things what is it showing this the highlighted portion is what the highlighted portion is the contribution of the current filter which is fuel and the dimmed out overall is the overall picture so it shows you the overall picture and the contribution of the current filter so less effort visually but faster better interpretation if you want multiple filters fuel plus travel no problem fuel plus travel now i don't know what color is travel no problem i can control click here also like that so even in a matrix even in a matrix now what have i filtered on gold and whatever this is sorry i put population here i wanted to put class so now if i have clicked here what is it filtering everything by no filter right now now b2 city is platinum is the filter now the problem is you may not remember what is the currently applied filter 
no problem so here every visual has a filter icon if you hover there it will tell you what is the filter now generally what happens we are interacting and we want uh, interactively someone asked a question i filtered it so i have say filtered on this and i have filtered on this and i have filtered on this and i want to show some very specific thing something which happened for fuel in june for whatever reason so let me do it again i want to explicitly highlight this part in life what click here click here and click let's say maharashtra so i have three filters what are they talking about maharashtra june fuel consumption for whatever reason and like in powerpoint what would i do i'll copy paste this view and paste it but here i don't want to copy paste but i want to quickly go to this without manually struggling with three filters now this is very very powerful so we go to view and we create bookmarks right i'm just going to delete all the bookmarks so that we understand from scratch so i have this special requirement and i can rename the bookmark what am i saying maharashtra fuel june let's say now of course i'll come out now at any point of time i want to come to a state with no filters that is also a good idea to put a base bookmark so i'm going to add one and i'll call it all and then let's create one more let's say if i click on silver card and uh, oh what i want to do now is there are states can i click yes can i control click yes but in the visual notice this is the visual this is what goes in the visual this is formatting for the visual so when you go here that current visual so the visuals disappear and then what do i have oh i have map settings i have controls and i have zoom buttons geo coding all kinds of things i have here and this can expand like this very very easy and lots of things are available here it is it will take you time to understand what exactly is available where but it you will get used to it as we go along so lots of features are usually available in all these things you can also choose what kind of map like i showed you earlier auto zoom zoom button geo coding lots of things anyway so now suppose i have silver and maharashtra and control click let's say uttar pradesh this is another bookmark so i'm saying silver maharashtra uttar pradesh so what am i doing i am actually creating slides out of my dashboard now when i am presenting what am i going to do i am going to collapse all go to full screen something like that right so if i go to view what do i have so many things are there now actually when i publish it automatically become full screen but here page view i can change this is an edit mode but assume i was presenting now what will i do i'll go to bookmarks and i'll say view i'm not adding view i have three bookmarks now notice what happens i get the first bookmark shown and then i have next like next slide this is all and this is smu so this is storytelling without copy pasting a very very powerful way this is not a screenshot during this if i want to change anything of course i can do it best of both worlds less effort more impact learn all possible useful things and if you get confused just click on all to come back that is how many many things can happen in a very easy manner so now we were talking about the tool tip part how do you create a more enhanced tool tip so what was i showing you this is tool tip and what was i showing you here you get a beautiful tool tip like this now it doesn't just app miraculously appear i will have to create a separate page of the type tool tip so when you create a new page let's create a blank page right and then go to visuals this is format for the page 
format for the page. In page, we have various types of settings, right? Which type of page is this is what we are trying to figure out right now. So if I want to create a tooltip, I create a special type of page called tooltip type of page. And then I can use that, allow use as tooltip, you enable, okay? So whatever I am showing here, now suddenly it became big because it's a tooltip. Right now it is showing you a zoomed version of it. So actual size is this. So this, whatever I put here will become the tooltip. Okay, so that's fine. Now what have I used here? I've used something which has class and amount. I've used something card type and amount. And I have used what? State and amount. Okay, fair enough. Now I go to some visual. I click on the visual. And then what do I do? I go to tooltips. Now earlier what did I do? I'll just remove this and show you what happens. Here I had manually dragged something. But now I actually added the page itself here. So now it puts two and two together. So when I go here, it understands what is it June. So now what is it really doing? It is like going here and going to filters. Now remember filters can be for individual visual. So this is filters for this visual or filters for this page. So this entire page is a tooltip. So now it is like saying, I am now going to filter this on June. I could have done that manually by going here, going to transactions, adding the month to page level filter and choosing the month as specifically June, for example. So look at this B2, B1. Now this thing is happening live when I go to June. So that is how a live tooltip will happen. So whatever is relevant, the filter will be passed. So this is how a lot of things can be beautifully done. Now there is another very important concept to understand. So I'm going to take this same one and help you understand. Right now, I have not used the month year. I have used date, quarter, year. Quarter is a bad idea because this is for assuming Jan is the year, but we can do it for India as well but I have year, month and day. Now I want to drill down. So notice there is a drill down, drill up functionality. So whenever you have multiple things, drill down will come. So I'll show you another example of this to make it easier to understand. So I have one more type of column chart and here in axis, I'm going to put expense type and gender. And amount as values. Now in either case, you see this drill down arrows. This is very important to understand. Drill up and drill down. So drill up and drill down. Let's see. <coughs> so what happens now is when I drill down, right now I am at year level. You see that I am at year, then month, then day. So if I am on a year, and I enable drill down, what will happen? When I click on 2018, only 2018 will be drilled down further. Now, if I click on this, it is 2018 July, like that, and then I can come up. That's one way, interactive drill down. Other way is I click on this, go to the next level in hierarchy. So ignore year, show me combined version of months across years. So this is Jan across all years, Feb across all years. So this is called go to the next level in hierarchy. Ignore the previous level. Third one is I want both means I want the year to be retained, but I want to break it down by month for all years. So expand to next level for each year. So now obviously it will get crowded. And if I go one more level, it will get really crowded. But unlike Excel, this has a scroll bar, so you can still make some sense. So upwards, upwards, like that. So drill down, drill through, all kinds of things are available. So bottom line, this is how you create the report. And then finally, what do you do? You save it. 
you save it as a PBIX file, save as PBIX. Now, Power BI Desktop, how do you get? Well, you go to powerbi.com, log in using your corporate ID, and then from the home tab, you will see some things here. Three dots, download Power BI Desktop. Sorry, Power BI Desktop. And this is what I'm showing you so far. You can install Power BI Desktop like this. Import you already know, clean up you already know, dashboard you already know. This part is completely free. You don't need a license for this. You can use it, create dashboards. If nothing else, send the PBX file. Don't send the file. Put it in OneDrive or Teams and send the link. You know that. So that is one simple way of sharing if you just have Power BI Desktop. If you have access to the cloud version, then you create it, save it and publish it. And then when you publish it, what happens? The same thing will be shown on the cloud version of it, like here the same. And then from here you share it the way I showed you earlier. So that's the way to share. It is better to share from here because if you send the PBIX file physically to someone, either as an attachment or as a link, what is the disadvantage? The other party needs to have Power BI desktop installed for it to open. And second, they can see all your raw data. This, they will only be able to interact with the report, but not see anything else. The report will be read only and you choose. If you already have a team, you can choose the team, choose the channel and the report link will go there. In fact, in teams, you can add a report directly by going to teams. So if you have teams and there is a report related to teams, what do you do? You go to teams not chat I'm talking about. In Teams, I have some channel. In channel, I have plus sign. Then I go to Power BI. Power BI is a button here. Then it'll show me whichever reports I have access to. So I am choosing various types. First time you'll have to log in, that's okay. But otherwise it'll understand. And then Assuming all this is done, you can actually add reports directly so people don't have to even go to a link and click on it. Every time you click on it, the report will render in an interactive manner. So that is the process. Now, it is another important thing to understand that when you publish to Power BI, what is getting published? Well, Power BI report obviously it is getting published, but in addition to that, something else is also getting published. So if you go to a report and see what is getting published, let me just go to the correct workspace. So I have this credit card, I just showed you that. But along with that, the data set, which means all the imported data, all the geographical identification, data type, summarization, categorization, all that raw data is also getting published online. Now, this is very important thing to understand. Why? Because maybe you know that the same data some colleague of yours is using or from an IT point of view, as IT, you know that hundreds of people are using the same CSV dump from somewhere. So now you create a data set, not only can only share the report with people, you can actually publish the data set so that others can use your data set without wasting time and everyone is using the same data set, single version of truth as we call it. And then of course you need to have permission to do that. So you can publish a data set. IT people can put certified data sets as a user. You can just say promoted so other users know that someone has already taken the effort so they can start using. So assuming you have done that, now this is Power BI Cloud. Now some colleague of yours wants to use the same credit cards data set which you have already cleaned up and published in Excel. What do you do? Well, you go to insert, no, data. There's no data here. From database, no, from Power BI. And then the data sets which are centrally published will appear here. So this is the credit card transactions, for example. And now what is it doing? It'll ask me for my login first time 
and then it will show you a pivot table and then you can do whatever you want. The only limitation here is here your drag drop amount, right? What is happening? Is it working? Yes. Where is the data? It's on cloud. Is it fast? Yes. How was the data cleaned? You don't need to care. That is best of both worlds. So as I said, they are not substitutes, they are adjuncts to each other. So this is the overall process. Get the data, use Power Query, create data model, create report, publish and publish data sets also. And whatever I showed you in Excel, which was uh, analyzed data, which was AI based data analytics, the same thing, button equivalent. What would I showed you? What I showed you is this, analyzed data. The same thing is available in Power BI also. It's more sophisticated actually. So when I publish a report, what is going to happen? Let me just show you that and then we'll finish and take questions. So this report will get published. It'll ask me for some workspace. Workspace is an area where you work. Every team automatically becomes a workspace. And now when it is published, of course, the browser version will be there. But it also says, do you want quick insights? So quick insights is what? Quick insights is the analyze data equivalent. So now when I go to the cloud, what is going to happen? So let me show you this data set, which was already there. This data set, you will see quick insights. And when I say quick insights, what happens? It will actually show me analytical version of that like Excel shows. So it will automatically correlate things and give me insights. So that is how this whole thing is a complete revolution. The data is same, you are same, your machine is same, but your life has changed for better.